Hey, what's up guys? This is Juan Pablo from You Know It 100% Finance at 100%Finance.com. Yes, the hat is back, representing, uh, about to work out after this video. But just wanted to give you guys a uh, quick overview or lesson about how to use hard money for flips. And I'm going to give you an illustration, an example of some, of some numbers. The numbers are similar to a flip I did. Um, but I changed some numbers, you know, because I didn't want to give you the exact specifics, but it, it was profitable. That's all you need to know. But I uh, just wanted to go over uh, how you should go about getting hard money and using it for a flip. Basically, how to analyze the numbers. Uh, some first things I want to talk about the deal. Let's say it's a three bedroom, one and a half bath, and you want to uh, add value to it. You want to make it a, a two full bath. Let's say the master bedroom is a uh, half bath and you want to make that to a full bath and let's say the master bedroom is pretty small so you want to make it to a master suite uh, you also want to add a deck to add value um, just uh, AC let's say it didn't have central air you want to add central air to it so you want to look for things that you can add value so okay so we found this property and let's say a, uh, a realtor found this property for us uh, some things I also wanted to mention. Okay, so let's say you found this deal. The first thing I think you need to do first is find the money, right? So when I mean find the money, I mean find someone who has hard money who'd be willing to lend it to you. So people ask me questions about hard money, like where do I get it? Um, what kind of qualifications? Well, it's, it's pretty much uh, they're localized. Hard money lenders are, are private lenders. These are people who have their own money or a pool of other investors' money and they'll lend it to you for, for a real estate investment. So people ask, why would I use hard money instead of just going to a bank like Bank of America and get a mortgage? Well, most uh, of these banks won't lend money on a property that's not habitable. So if you find a perfect distressed property, you always wanna get the ugliest beat up house on the prettiest, nicest block, you know? So let's say you found this beat up, horrible looking house and there's no copper pipes, there's no kitchen cabinets has been gutted or stolen or whatever uh, Bank of America won't lend you money on that why because it's not habitable but a hard money lender will they'll lend you money based upon something called the after repair value or ARV for short basically what that means is how much the property would be worth based upon the location based upon uh, the things you tend to do with the property you know based upon comps comparable sales in the area they'll lend you money based off that Normally, it's 65% uh, of the ARV is the amount they'll lend you to buy, fix up, and even close on the property. So with, uh, with hard money, uh, what I've done in the past is basically I called about 10 hard money lenders and uh, asked them for their terms and for applications to fill out. Where did I find these people? Online. You just put a city that you're investing in. So if I'm investing in uh, Des Moines, I Iowa, whatever, I'll put Des Moines hard money lenders or hard money lenders in Des Moines, something like that. And uh, the first 10 that showed up, I look at their websites and look at their terms, which I can see visually myself without asking them. And then I will call them just to create rapport and inquire about applying, tell them a little bit about my situation whether you know I have a W-2 income or not have W-2 income, ask them if it's possible that I might qualify. You know, just just give them a little background about myself. So I called about ten of those, and again, you can just find this in the yellow pages. You can find it uh, in the phone book. You can find them online, or you can go to your uh, RIA groups, your real estate investment associations or alliances groups, and uh, you can just ask around, just network, and you'll find hard money lenders there or you'll find investors or rehabbers who are affiliated with some of these um, hard money lenders. And uh, and just, just, in, just as a side note, if you don't happen to qualify for hard money, it's not the end of the world. Only thing you have to do is be resourceful. You find people out there who do qualify and you partner with them. That's exactly what I'm doing with the, a flip I'm doing now. I'm actually partnering with a guy who qualifies for hard money. And I had the capital, he found the deal, so it's it a perfect match. I bring the money, he brings the deal, and he brings the hard money. I just pretty much bring the down payment money. But, uh, so you can do that. So let's say you found a hard money lender, right? And these are the terms. He wants, if you look up here, 
Uh, if you don't can't see this information clearly, just make sure you email me, and I'll send you a printout of this. Okay? But it's basically you found a hard money lender online, and what he said he said he'll give you 65% of the ARV. That means he'll give you 65% of what the property will be worth. Uh, his his terms are 13% interest only, and most hard money lenders will give you interest only loans, so you're not paying the principal. And normally they want their principal paid off within a year's time. So they might say you know um, the minimum holding period meaning you have to pay me at least a you know certain amount of months interest before you sell the property or, or refinance me out uh, they might say it's six months or a year or 13 months it just depends on the lender but let's say this lender says okay you gotta um, pay me 13 percent interest only I don't care when you pay me back you know you don't have to hold the property for six months to a year just whenever you get the money, you can pay me back at any time. And they said three points. A point is basically 1% of the loan amount that you're borrowing. So if you're borrowing $100,000, one point is equal to $1,000. Understood? So they said they want three points. So they call it hard money for a reason because the terms are hard. You know, it's not easy to, to lend off of. It's not like it's a conventional mortgage where you're getting maybe 4.5% interest rate amortize over 30 years no with this I want 13% interest rate and I want my money back my principal in a year's time or less otherwise I'll be taxing you I'll be penalizing you with heavy fees and fines and things like that and they said they want you know 3% for uh, points origination fees whatever they call it each, each person has a different term but again you can email me this stuff at uh, 100 this is the website 100percentfinance.com but you can email me at 100percentfinance at gmail.com. Uh, so let's get into it. So let's say your realtor found you this deal. It's a uh, REO, real estate owned property, which is a property that's been purchased by the bank. Uh, a homeowner unfortunately foreclosed on the property and now the bank owns it. So they're selling at a discount because it's been sitting on the market. It probably incurred some... Uh, damages or has been maintained properly so uh, the value of the property reduced and they want to get it off their books the banks they want to sell it so they sell it at a discount so you buy it for thirty two thousand dollars okay with that thirty two thousand dollars as the purchase price you get a uh, contractor in which you did your homework you did a three uh, rules of um, hiring vendors Meaning you ask for references for each one and each of those references you ask if they completed the job on time, completed a job similar to yours, and did they stay within budget and would you recommend them. So you did that, you're qualified, you know, you did your research. So this contractor, he, get, he tells you he can get this property looking pretty, up to code, for just say $38,000. However, you add an additional 7000 just for an oops factor, you know, a contingency, a reserve, just in case there's something that unforeseeable happens and you have a reserve for that. You know, you might open a wall and find out all the electrical needs updated or the plumbing, or you find out that the uh, HVAC system needs to be replaced in full. Uh, things like that. You find out there's a crack in the foundation you didn't see it for, you know, stuff like that. So you want to um, add that uh, contingency there. So you added seven thousand to that. So basically, you're buying it for thirty-two, and you're putting forty-five thousand worth of work into it. And with hard money, if you don't spend that whole forty-five, then you just basically keep that cash, you know. And let's say it costs about five thousand to close on the property. It's just a random number I put there, just five thousand. It differs by state, you know. Like down south, the closing cost might be a thousand, but up north, which I also invest up north. In Pennsylvania, it's it's about five percent of the of the total cost, so it might be five or six thousand is my average cost towards closing on a property. So it just it just differs, you know, because all taxes are different and things like that. Because your closing costs may comprise of settlement charges, you know, doing a title search and all that, uh, title insurance. It covers uh, taxes, attorney fees, all that good stuff. So it's five thousand dollars. So total cost. To buy, fix up, and close on the property is eighty-two thousand. So that's thirty-two thousand to buy it, forty-five thousand to rehab it, five thousand for closing costs, which equates to eighty-two thousand dollars. So remember, up here, 
This hard money lender says he'll lend us 65% of the ARV. Why do they choose 65%? Because they want to make sure that if you mess up and they have to keep this property and foreclose on you, that at least they buy a, a good discount where they can finish the rehab themselves and sell it or keep it in their portfolio as a rental and do a cash out refinance. So they want to have some spread in there. So you want to make sure you buy it right. If you buy it right in the beginning, you can end up buying this property 100% finance, hence the website. Um, but let's say in this situation that this hard money lender here, he wants a down payment, subject for DP, for down payment. He wants a 20% down payment. So he, he does this because he wants you to have skin in the game, right? I've done a hard money loan to uh, one lender in particular. He didn't care about me having skin in the game. So he would lend me 100% of the money. I would get 100% of the money to buy it, fix it, rehab, and close it, and not take a dime out of my pocket. However, this lender, let's say based on your area, like there's some in, in the South, in Georgia, where they do require you to have some skin in the game, which is 20%, just to cover their self, you know, make sure that you don't just walk away from the property, things go south. So this guy requires a down payment. So. The total cost, okay, so let's go back. The ARV, the ARV is the after repair value as I discussed earlier, which is basically how much the property will be worth after it's repaired based upon the location, things you do to the property, etc. So how do you come up with the ARV? You ask the realtor who found you the deal for comps, comparable sales, you know, uh, three most recently sold air, uh, houses in that area within the past uh, six months, you know, within a, a close radius to the property. And then you want to get an appraisal. The hard money lender may require you to get an appraisal, which is great. And you tell them the scope of work, which is what you intend to do to the property to make it beautiful, to make it pretty so it can sell fast. You know, with all the wow factors, the sizzle and all that stuff, the recessed lighting, the nice backsplash, all that good stuff. So you tell them everything you tend to do with the property. And where'd you get that from? The contractor for the rehab. So you get that to the appraiser. And he, he says, okay, based upon the scope of work of what you intend to do to the property, I say the repair value or the appraised value of the subject property will be 127,000, okay? And let's say he's accurate, let's say he's true. So it's 127,000. So if you take 65% of 127,000, about to do this in my calculator, right here. So uh, 127,000 times 0.65, that's $82,550. Oh, look, our total cost is 82. So this hard money lender, that meets the criteria. Even a little less, but we're under $500, which is great. So, however, he requires a 20% down payment. If he didn't require 20% down payment, you're good. But since he does, he wants you to have 16,000 in the game. So the good thing about hard money lenders, most of them don't care where you got the 16,000 from. It's not like a bank where they want to see two months bank statements just to verify where you got the money from. You know, where's this large deposit from? You know how most mortgage companies are. But with hard money lenders, they don't care. They're like, just show me the proof of funds. Show me the first page of your bank statement or print out of your, if you check your balance today at your bank and show me that the $16,000 is there and I'll accept that at closing, you know, when you transfer the funds to close on the property. So let's say, since we're all about 100% finance, you know, you want to finance 100% of the property so that it can produce income or capital gains for you in the future, in the near future. So let's say the 16,000, you got it from two ways, which is these arrows right here. You got it from a business credit card, um, which you got 10,000 from, and it, you have to pay at least 20% of that towards, you know, processing the business credit card, paying the interest, because we're going to hold it for four, four months. So let's say the total fees for all that is 10 is 20% of the 10 K, which is uh, $2,000. So let's say the bar 10,000 from your business credit card is going to be, is going to end up costing you an additional $2,000 or $12,000 in total. Okay. And then you got the other 6,000 from a private money lender. Let's say it's a friend of yours fraternity brother of yours, a fellow colleague, uh, someone you network with, a family member, whoever it is, they were willing to lend you $6,000 in return for 10% uh, interest rate. 
that's going to be payable if you structure it right. That's payable once the house sells. So you don't pay them anything during the interim while you're holding the property. You pay them their interest, which is uh, $600, once the house sells. And you might say, I'll pay you in five months. And you plan to hold it for a maximum of four months. Okay? And let's say it's going to take you a month and a half to rehab it, but you just put in some time there, just say four or five months total, just in case, you know, while, while the house is on the market, so it sells. But hopefully, if you make it the best house in the area, and it's at the same purchase price where the other properties are being purchased at, your house will sell quickly. Because that's what you want to do. You want to have, you want to find the, the most ugliest beat up house on the block, on the best block, and then you want to make your house the best house on the block, but still at market rate. Right? So our ARV is 127000 so all the houses in the neighborhood should be selling for 127000 or higher. Okay? So, you got that. So basically, you got the six thousand from a private money lender. You got the ten thousand from business credit. If you're interested in business credit, go to 100percentfinance.com, and I'll show you how to get business credit. I received one hundred ten thousand dollars in business credit within a period of twelve months in 2013, and you can do the same. So you can use business credit to, to finance your deal, especially for down payment with with hard money. So you got the sixteen thousand for the down payment. Now your loan amount with the hard money lender is sixty six thousand dollars. Which is the math is $82,000, which you got from buying it, rehabbing it, closing it, it's, it the total is $82,000, minus the $16,000 down payment, leaves you with $66,000. Okay? So, now let's go on this side. This is how you calculate your, uh, your profit. Oh, yeah, by the way, I put a side note here. When you're rehabbing a property, basically, Every ten thousand dollars that you spend on rehabbing a property, it's just take a week to rehab it. So we borrowed forty-five thousand, so that should take about four and a half weeks to complete the rehab. Okay. So the ARV is one hundred twenty-seven thousand. Now we're going to calculate our profit. Oh, <laughs> sorry if we keep going back, guys. But here's another note I'm putting in there. So let's say before all this part over here is buying the property. But let's say you also spend about $1,000 to get an appraisal done, which we discussed earlier, and to get inspections done. Because you always want to do an inspection because you don't know if the contractor missed something or uh, just to make sure, you know, do the termites or like radon or uh, making sure the foundation is good. Check all the mechanicals, the roof, the HVAC. I mean, most of the time, a, a general contractor can do all that stuff. You can save the money, but... If you're new, just get a property inspection just to be on the safe side. So that's a thousand dollars. So we're going to subtract that from our cost. So everything on the left side is what we incur to buy the property. Now we're talking about how to calculate our profit based upon all the other expenses we have in debt service. So it's 127, let's say that's what the house is selling for. How, the monthly interest is 66,000, which is our loan amount times 13% interest, that's what the hard money interest rate is, and you divide that by 12 months, that comes out to $700, but I put 0.7K. All right, so that's $700 a month that you'll be paying interest only to borrow $66,000 from a hard money lender. So that's pretty expensive, right? So let's say we're, it, took, it takes us four months to sell the property, so if you're paying these uh, hard money interest for four months, so that's four months times... $700 or 0.7K, which is, you know, 0.7 thousand, you know, which comes out to $2,800, which is $2,800. That's how much it costs in interest to hold this loan for four months. Four months times $700 is $2,800, right? Which I put 2.8K. The holding costs are uh, things like the cost that you incur to hold it. You know, you have to pay the water bill, you have to pay electricity, you might have to pay for the gas bill. You might have to pay uh, maybe to stage your property while you're showing it, so you're paying a fee for that. Uh, you're paying for insurance. You might have to pay for some taxes. So let's say your total holding cost for that four-month period is $1,200, or I'll put 1.2K. All right? So a realtor, let's say you list it with a realtor to sale, and it takes 6% interest rate, you know, which is split between the listing agent and the buyer's agent. And the total cost that you have to pay is... $7,600, which I put 7.6K. I wrote it like this, 1.2K and 7.6K, because it's not that much room on the whiteboard. 
All right, so let's say $7,600 that you have to pay the realtor. Closing costs, let's say again, you have to pay $5,000. Again, just, just throw numbers out there, random numbers. And let's say business credit, you have to repay that. So um, you borrow 10,000 times 120%, which is basically 20% that you, the cost you incur to you know, convert into cash for the interest rate during the interim, things like that. So you have to pay back a total of $12,000, okay? 10,000 is the principal and the interest and fees is another 2,000, so that's $12,000 in total you have to repay back the business credit card. Private money, again, you borrow $6,000 from a friend and you're paying them a 10% interest, so it's 6,000 times 110%, comes out to 6.6K, which is $6,600. That's how much you have to repay the person, the private money lender, after you sell the property, okay? The hard money loan, you gotta repay that too, so you borrow 66,000, but again, there were three points, remember? 65% ARV, 30% interest only, three points. So you had to pay three points, so three points are 66,000 times 103% is $68,000, right? So if you subtract all these expenses plus 1,000 for appraisals and inspection, because you also paid it for that, you subtract 127,000 minus uh, 2,800 minus 1,200 minus 7,600 minus 5,000 minus 12,000 minus 6,600 minus 68,000 minus a thousand for the appraisals and inspections leaves you with a profit of $22,000. So if you really think about it, you just made $22,000 in a period of four months by buying a flip without using your own money. That's my friend is the 100% finance way. You get capital gains of over $20,000 without using your own money. So people say it takes money to make money. Well, does it have to be your money, necessarily? As you see in this illustration, it does not. So what you can also do on the flip side is uh, you can also, instead of selling this, you can do a cash out refinance. You still hold the property and you just pull out the cash and you pay off these other expenses and you still get a monthly profit called cash flow as well. And there's some hard money lenders where they don't require a down payment. So you don't have to pay 20% interest towards your business credit card. Again, I just made up these numbers. Business credit card are not 20%. So I'm not saying that. I just, I just don't want to make it look like it's, it's harder terms. But in the case, it's not always that so. That's so. Because um, with business credit, you can uh, receive 0% interest for 6 to 12 billion cycles. So for 6 months to 12 months, you're paying 0% interest on it, which is great. So I just made it high like that. And even private money, that's 10%. That's high too. You might be able to get a loved one to give you the money for 5% interest rate. You know. But I just like to pay my private money people a, a nice uh, above average interest rate so they can spread the word and do more deals with me. So the next uh, question is basically, how do you find these deals? How do you find a deal that fits this model? So you can keep doing them over and over and over and over again. Well, my friends, if you go to 100percentfinance.com, again, that's 100percent, percent, finance, F-I-N-A-N-C-E-D.com. You go to the eBooks page, and I have eBooks on there about flipping, about buying and holding, and also about wholesaling. So uh, all this is about flipping right here. So if you want more details about how to get a team of realtors to to find these deals for you about um, things you should discuss with your contractor to screen them to make sure they're credible establishing your team uh, certain things you should have in your house to make it you know sizzles the wild wow factors so they'll sell quickly and also to put some information in there about um, uh, how to make it sell fast and uh, other sources of money that you can use for these deals and um, it's just a lot of good stuff in that ebook so if you guys are interested go to 100percentfinance.com and check on the ebooks page so you can do your own flips like clock work so I hope this was useful for you guys um, just want to give you guys some illustrations and you guys can do it you know so I hope this answers all the questions you might have about uh, flipping and hard money and things like that 